Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we are uh, discussing uh, shockwave uh, boundary layer interactions which become important in uh, high Mach number flows where you have both the shocks as well as boundary layers close to the uh, wall. In the previous uh, class we had a brief introduction to uh, what are boundary layers, what are uh, how do they behave, what are their uh, uh, equations in a qualitative sense. And we looked at the flow of uh, sep uh, the phenomena of uh, uh, flow separation uh, which is important in the context of uh, boundary layers and also it increases drag significantly and we looked at compressible boundary layers. Uh, now we look at how uh, these uh, facts, uh, these various observations that we made in the last class, how they affect flow in uh, high Mach numbers when you have. Uh, shock waves also. The first concept is uh, that of uh, the boundary layer, uh, we know that it increases uh, rapidly with Mach number. Uh, so, here if you consider this particular picture, um, this is of a flat plate and if it is an invisit flow and a supersonic flow in supersonic or uh, high Mach number flow uh, invisit in uh, nature, then the flow is not affected at all, mm, it just flows over, the, everything is constant, pressure is also constant. Okay. But uh, in real flows you have viscosity and uh, uh, the consequence of viscosity is a boundary layer develops. So, here is a boundary layer that has developed and um, the boundary layer thickness is uh, relatively significant in uh, high Mach numbers. Uh, we also know that the boundary layer produces uh, a velocity uh, v infinity uh, or sorry v uh, which actually deflects the streamlines outward and as a consequence the um, thickness or uh, the boundary layer grows. Now, so that means the flow coming from uh, uniform flow coming from outside is getting deflected and this is a supersonic flow. So, any deflection in supersonic flow uh, should produce the deflection which is towards the flow or flow turning into itself, uh, it should produce a shock. Therefore, we find that in viscous flows, um, when you have viscous uh, flows or uh, in real flows where there is boundary layer, uh, shocks are always produced because the uh, really thick boundary layer produces significant displacement. So, the outer invisible flow is actually seeing a certain displaced flow or an equivalent kind of a uh, body uh, which changes uh, really the pressure distribution that is felt on a flat plate. Ideally, if you did not have the boundary layer, if it was completely invisible, then you should have the um, pressure distribution as same that is at 1. But because of uh, the boundary layer and the viscous effects, there is a different pressure uh, uh, distribution that is felt and uh, so uh, now we see that there is an interaction of the um, thick boundary layer with the invisible flow that is outer which is termed as uh, uh, viscous interaction and viscous interactions uh, change the pressure field or uh, the pressure over the body. So, when we were, what we are interested really is to find pressure over bodies and what we typically saw uh, in general what is done is we consider an invisit flow and uh, uh, we find the pressure distribution from the invisit flow impose that pressure distribution onto the boundary layer uh, where across the boundary layer there is no change in pressure. But uh, 
uh, what we find here is the presence of the boundary layer itself uh, changes the inviscid flow in a certain way. Uh, this change is large uh, in this particular region um, where uh, the change in boundary layer wherever change in boundary layer thickness is very large then the interaction with the inviscid flow is very large. Uh, we call that as a strong interaction. A viscous interaction parameter chi is defined uh, which goes as m infinity cube by square root of Reynolds number and a ratio of uh, the flow properties density and viscosity at the wall to density and viscosity at the uh, free stream or the outer edge of the uh, boundary layer. So, uh, by evaluating this parameter chi we can find out whether uh, the interaction is strong or weak. Uh, in weak interactions the uh, change in boundary layer thickness is relatively small therefore, uh, the effect on pressure is also uh, relatively uh, small. So, uh, strong interactions are close to the leading edges where you have a large change in um, the boundary layer um, thickness. Okay, this is one kind of an interaction uh, which happens in high Mach number flows which is due to uh, viscous effects and thick uh, boundary layers. Uh, the other kind of interaction that occurs is uh, the interaction of a shock wave uh, with the boundary layer. A shock wave is uh, a sudden jump of uh, pressure uh, and pressure increases across a shock wave that means there is a sudden increase and uh, that represents a very sharp uh, uh, dp by dx. So, dp by dx is greater than 0 it is not only greater than 0 it is very sharp uh, it is a sudden increase in pressure and uh, we know that the boundary layer responds to adverse pressure gradients boundary layer thickness in general increases in adverse pressure gradients and the separation phenomena also occurs in adverse pressure gradients. So, what happens when uh, there is uh, a shock wave boundary layer interaction ok. Um, so, let us uh, look at that uh, there are several instances where we can find shock wave boundary layer interactions uh, they uh, appear on uh, airfoils or wings uh, when they travel in the transonic regime ok. So, uh, that is the case. So, uh, there are several instances uh, in which uh, shock wave boundary layer interactions can be found. Uh, whenever uh, we consider an airfoil uh, in transonic flow uh, this is not very um, difficult any normal airliner trans uh, goes around Mach 0.8 or so which is in the transonic uh, regime and uh, very early on in the classes um, we had looked at a few images uh, of airfoils in transonic flow and uh, we saw that uh, there is a pocket of supersonic flow and um, so a supersonic flow pocket develops and then finally, is terminated by a uh, nearly normal shock. So, now this shock uh, impinges on the wall uh, of the airfoil and uh, always there is a boundary layer that is there over the wall and therefore, there occurs a shock wave boundary layer interaction over there. Uh, similarly, if you consider any flow for that uh, aspect where there is supersonic flow uh, and their walls uh, for example, nozzles, nozzle flows uh, there are boundary layers on the walls of the nozzle and um, if the nozzle operates in off design conditions especially over expanded conditions shock waves form uh, with uh, maybe near the nozzle exit then there is an interaction of boundary layer with the uh, boundary layers. Uh, uh, shocks and boundary layers at the nozzle. Uh, then uh, any uh, say a shock generator uh, impacting giving rise to shocks which impact on any surface uh, 
over which there is a boundary layer. This leads to shock boundary layer interactions this is typical in say uh, intakes and so on. And if the uh, <coughs> protrusions they are in supersonic flow uh, steps uh, both forward facing steps there is a shock that develops boundary layer is there and there is shock wave boundary layer interactions. So, there is uh, any uh, body in supersonic flow for that matter you can expect um, there will be some form of shock wave interact shock wave boundary layer uh, interaction. So, here are some uh, images taken from uh, different uh, literatures available on this topic. For example, this shows uh, a near normal uh, shock which is what uh, similar to what is found on airfoils in transonic regime. You have a shock here and the shock has uh, interacted with the boundary layer and uh, the con as a consequence there is a uh, separation of the boundary layer over here. Uh, similarly, this is a flow in a variable area duct uh, which can be uh, a nozzle also and here th there is a shock that has occurred within the duct. Uh, what we normally uh, expect or when we talk about shocks in ducts which we have done in this class um, we said that there is a possibility that a shock can occur and we considered a normal shock in this case and we did lot of calculations assuming uniform flows before and after the shock. But now if we consider a real picture of uh, flow within the duct uh, and a shock that develops in the duct, uh, then the shock actually interacts with the boundary layer and the boundary layer is affected by the shock as a consequence of which the shock structure itself undergoes a change here. What we find is a shock which is more uh, having a kind of you know a lambda kind of structure here. Mm. Okay, a Y shape or a lambda shape structure while at uh, the center line it is more or less normal. So, uh, you see that um, uh, whatever pictures or uh, ideas that we had uh, they are actually models of real flows. In real flows uh, where there are boundary layers and viscous effect at the wall and uh, when there is a shock then uh, the phenomena of shock wave boundary layer interaction becomes important. It causes important changes to uh, the flow field and uh, we have to then uh, come and analyze them more closely. Now, you can see here also another interesting fact that you have uh, the shock shock interactions that we had discussed in the uh, previous class. Uh, previous uh, classes. So, uh, uh, in when you have such interactions with the shock and boundary layer, you not only have shock wave boundary layer interactions, you can also have shock shock interactions as a uh, result of changes to the shock structure itself. Uh, some more uh, pictures was th that will emphasize the um, importance of the shock wave boundary layer interactions. Here you have an shock from the fore body it is a typical inlet this uh, uh, this image was taken in uh, laboratory for hypersonic and shock wave research in uh, Indian Institute of Science. So, here you have a shock wave uh, and this shock wave now goes and impinges on a cowl uh, which is typical this kind of a geometry is typical of intakes in high speed flows in scramjet kind of intakes. And here you find uh, that this uh, interacts this shock after all the shock interactions interacts with the boundary layer on this plate. Okay. So, uh, in such intakes this problem of uh, shock wave boundary layer interaction is important. Then you have the corner flows always you can have uh, in many of these uh, flight vehicles or you can have flows of this kind where you have a uh, corner. Then at the corner uh, you have an incoming boundary layer, uh, you have a 
uh, free stream they are getting turned and uh, there is an interaction of the boundary layer uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the ramp produces a shock the turn of the supersonic flow produces a shock and this shock then interacts with the boundary layer and as a consequence a uh, shock boundary layer interaction occurs here what we normally expect is that there is a shock attached shock over here this is what is normally expected but uh, now uh, as a consequence of boundary layer the shock structure that is formed is uh, completely different from what we had expected um, from an inviscid case. So, let us look at uh, uh, so these uh, shock boundary layer interactions the physical flow features uh, they can be classified into weak interactions and uh, strong interactions. Uh, weak interactions uh, when weak interactions happen there uh, are no flow separation uh, of the boundary layer at the boundary layer. So, uh, but the boundary layer response uh, to the uh, increase in pressure. So, there is an uh, adverse pressure gradient uh, that is imposed on the boundary layer due to the shock and we know that whenever there is an adverse pressure gradient the boundary layer thickens. So, um, uh, the in weak shock wave boundary layer interactions there is a thickening of the boundary layer, um, but uh, separation does not take place. This is the case uh, this is a case of an impinging shock from a shock generator a shock is coming on uh, to the wall boundary layer here and uh, this shock is relatively weak uh, as a consequence uh, the interaction is also weak and it just uh, locally it uh, changes or increases the uh, boundary layer thickness but the flow features otherwise are um, relatively they are the same what we would expect um, when we do not uh, uh, I mean the qualitative aspects of the flow features are similar to uh, a shock reflection. Okay. Uh, similarly, for the case of a, a corner flow uh, over here that is uh, what we expect is that there is uh, a shock along this uh, an attached shock at the corner this is what is expected you can see there is an attached shock at the corner, but uh, in the initial part uh, there is a uh, slight curvature this is due to uh, the boundary layer viscous interaction. Um, this is the boundary layer edge, so you see that the boundary layer edge is uh, much thicker and uh, inside the boundary layer you have a non uniform flow. Uh, it can be supersonic also as a consequence the shock actually uh, is also curved. Okay. Then later on it develops a uh, oblique shock, but here again it is a weak interaction uh, here uh, there is no flow separation involved. So, a weak shock wave boundary layers it does not involve uh, flow separation and uh, it changes the local boundary layer uh, characteristics it may slightly thicken it, uh, but otherwise the qualitative aspects of the flow features uh, they remain um, uh, or the shock waves and uh, bon uh, they remain more or less the same. Uh, so, this is the uh, uh, schematic for an impinging shock uh, in weak shock wave boundary layer interaction domain and uh, one has to remember that uh, within the boundary layer uh, uh, the flow is non uniform uh, that is why uh, you have uh, a series of waves that are produced and your shock actually curves okay. uh, that is because of the non uniformity and this change in uh, the structure of the boundary layer can produce certain uh, waves. Uh, they can be compression waves that can just uh, coalesce together to form a shock. Uh, the uh, qualitative aspects of these uh, waves and uh, shock waves are similar in the case uh, of these weak uh, shock wave bond layer interactions. Uh, key highlight here is there is no flow separation.
so, what we expected uh, was that in an inviscid solution the uh, shock will produce a sudden jump um, of pressure, uh, but really when there is a boundary layer what happens is that there is a more gradual increase of pressure to uh, pressures after the shock. This gradual increase at the wall is due to uh, the boundary layer interaction and we see that there is a certain amount of uh, uh, upstream influence. That is if we had considered uh, that uh, an inviscid case it might have interacted at this point on the uh, on the uh, wall, uh, but now the pressure increase happens much upstream compared to this point. So, um, there is an upstream influence uh, due to the boundary layer where you can have subsonic regions very close to the wall. So, uh, the flow can be subsonic very close to the wall and there can be a there is a line which separates the subsonic and supersonic parts which is the sonic line and uh, that is depicted over here and the subsonic portion can um, uh, communicate upstream and cause upstream influence. So, the uh, rise in pressure is more gradual due to the effect of uh, boundary layer. Now, we come to the case when uh, boundary layer thickness is uh, boundary layer interaction is strong. In case of shock, strong shock wave boundary layer interactions, the boundary layer uh, separates, it may reattach. Um, the shock structure is significantly changed, it is uh, quite different from what we expect in the case of an invisible uh, flow structure. Uh, these are the cases uh, for um, an impinging shock. So, you see here that the boundary layer just simply separates. Similarly, this is the case for a corner flow where there is separation and a separation shock is actually found much ahead of the corner and uh, a reattachment shock is also formed. So, let us look at um, the uh, flow features in such uh, strong shock wave boundary layer interactions. So, here uh, what happens is basically a separation happens. So, flow field is separated here. Mm -hmm. So, because of this uh, separation the uh, streamlines actually uh, turn, uh, they turn towards the flow. Uh, as a consequence a shock is formed much ahead of the interaction point and uh, uh, with the wall. So, that is the separation shock which is due to the separation which is much uh, uh, upstream of uh, what would have been the inviscid interaction point. It not only separates it uh, later on it can reattach. When it reattaches so you see the nature here it separates then it increases in thickness. Uh, so, if you look at the outer flow first it is turned into itself it is like a bump then after that it is turned away from itself. When it is turned away from the uh, supersonic flow it produces expansion fans and then uh, Mach number increases here, Mach number increases, uh, but then again you have a wall it cannot uh, turn anymore therefore you get a reattachment and therefore you get a consequence you get a shock again. So, that is the reattachment shock here and uh, you have slip lines and various other features that occur. So, this separation shock can interact with the uh, incoming shock uh, that is the impinging shock and produce shock shock interactions. So, uh, you see now that this picture is much more uh, complex compared to a simple reflection of the wall. Okay. If there is a boundary layer and the shock boundary layer interaction is strong, then it can change the flow structure significantly. Um, similarly, for a corner flow, now in the corner flow you the boundary layer separates here. So, you, you have a separation shock forming much uh, ahead of the corner. So, there is a much ahead upstream uh, point a separation shock is formed. After separation the flow reattaches, similarly a reattachment shock is formed and uh, shock shock interactions occur due to these two shocks. So, uh, 
uh, we find that when there is strong shockwave boundary layer interactions, um, there is a significant change in uh, the flow field. Uh, so, you if you look at the pressure profile, it is uh, com somewhat different. You find first there is an uh, increase in pressure, this is due to separation shock. Then there is a, uh, a plateau in pressure in the region uh, over this region where is the separation zone, there there is a plateau in region and then again the uh, pressure increases due to reattachment shock and finally, it reaches P2. Okay. So, uh, in strong shockwave boundary layer interactions you have a uh, pressure profile which is of this kind uh, where there is a plateau pressure also. So, uh, the key idea that uh, it needs to be conveyed here is that in real flows there is always a boundary layer and uh, whenever there are shocks in supersonic flows or high Mach number flows uh, and there is a boundary layer, there is always shock boundary layer interactions and the flow structures that develop as a consequence of shock by boundary layer interactions are somewhat uh, different from the typical picture uh, that we uh, get from uh, initial studies or initial uh, discussions in gas dynamics. Uh, so, this should always be borne in mind um, that if you look at nozzles, we discussed shocks in nozzles, we said that uh, it is like a normal shock and if we capture the flow uh, uh, through an actual Schlieren for example, what is shown here, uh, we find that uh, there is a lot of shocks, they are completely different the flow can be unsteady also, but there is a normal shock at the at a certain location as well. Uh, now, uh, let us look at uh, shock waves in ducts also. Mm. Uh, if you consider a uniform duct, uh, then um, the there is a boundary layer along the duct wall also. So, uh, if there is a shock wave here in the duct and the shock is very weak then you produce uh, weak shock wave boundary layer interactions and uh, more or less we can say the shock wave is uh, nearly normal, but this is at very low Mach numbers. As in Mach number is increased, it starts affecting the boundary layer, it can produce a local change in boundary layer uh, producing slightly non-uniform flows and, um, and as a consequence the shock can become curved. Uh, then uh, the point uh, can be that uh, the shock can produce a lambda kind structure uh, which is of this kind, but there is only one shock here. Uh, this is for a slightly higher uh, Mach number, but for relatively high Mach numbers what really happens is there is a boundary layer separation due to shock interaction. Uh, but now there is a complex flow features that are developed because the shock the flow separates then the flow separated flow undergoes a series of changes where you can almost consider them as alternate um, uh, convergent divergent sections okay as a consequence you get many many shocks uh, before uh, it actually becomes uh, subsonic. So, uh, what you get is a series of shocks known as shock train. So, in high uh, Mach number flows in ducts and uh, where there are shocks you actually get a shock train due to uh, shock boundary layer interaction. It is not a single shock and that can be seen this is an actual picture of uh, a shock train in a duct. Um, so, you can see there are several shocks, it is not just uh, one shock, so 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 and so on. So, each of them is a shock, uh, after each shock the flow again accelerates, then it again uh, produces a shock and so on. Uh, and this is a consequence of uh, the interaction of the shocks with the boundary layer and corresponding non-uniform flow. Uh, that is produced. So, uh, these pictures have been given here in order to uh, sort of uh, uh, 
bring about uh, the idea that uh, real flows as they happen in devices like nozzles, diffusers um, or ducts uh, actually involve uh, both uh, the inviscid effects as well as the viscous interactions uh, and boundary layer and shock may interact producing significant changes to the uh, flow. Uh, but whatever we have discussed earlier on are very good models of the flow uh, within ducts. So, it is useful to understand uh, how flow happens within ducts and uh, how are shock waves formed and uh, so on. Uh, but if one starts going into details of the flow in ducts, then uh, one has to consider uh, the additional complexities produced due to uh, shocks, boundary layers, shear layers and their uh, interactions. So, uh, this was a slight uh, in, uh, introduction to uh, flows in uh, real uh, devices in practical applications. Uh, with this we have covered uh, almost all topics uh, in uh, what we had planned. Uh, so, with this I close uh, this uh, particular lecture.